Welcome back everyone to this beautiful session of new chapter. Okay, doubly reinforced section. I hope you know what is concrete, what is steel and uh, how the initial setup of limit state method was formed and the initial stages of load and material factors, uh, all those things, factor safeties. And we have, I hope you know what is single reinforced section and what is reinforcement, how to design a single reinforced section, analysis, every, all those things. And very, very important thing is you know the story behind the singular reinforced section. Unless you don't know the story, you can never understand this theory. If you didn't understand this theory, you can never understand DRS anything. Okay. I want to tell you one more thing. Unless you didn't understand the singular reinforcement theory, I already told you. If you didn't understand the theory, you can never understand doubly reinforced. You can never understand flanger beam. You can never understand slab chapters, slab design, and you can never understand footing design. So around 60 percentage of the RCC syllabus is revolving around the singular reinforced section chapter. So if you are not clear, if you have any doubt, please ask me or if you are not clear, please go back to the cho those chapters, solve all the problems, try to understand the full theory neck to neck, then come here, th then these chapters will take only really 15 to 30 minutes to understand, nothing else, okay, maximum in one hour you will know full beam, if you know the singular reinforced section theory very clearly, okay, so this session will be another 15 to 16 minute session to tell you the theory, okay, and how to design and how to analysis, okay. So let's start the theory behind why we need to go for a doubly reinforced section. Uh, so whenever there is a depth restriction problem, consider the moment acting in the building is 200, 250 mm. I hope one of the example we solved you have seen 200 kilo Newton meter required 800 mm of depth approximately. Okay. So if you see to the bending moment when it is going very high, when the bending moment will go very high, whenever there is a heavy wind load, very heavy lateral loads, wind load, this, uh, whenever there is a blasting load is expected, whenever there is a wave effect of water, like uh, offshore structures or uh, coastal structures, whenever there is a bridge, moving wind loads, everything, there you can expect a very, very high bending moment, 200, 300, even 400, 500, 1000 also, okay, when there is a heavy piling structure, the only four piles are there in the structure, you can expect 800, 900 kilo Newton meter also. So, when the, whenever there is a very high bending moment, okay, so, the first reason, okay, whenever you have very high bending moment, required depth will be very high because you have seen the formula m equal to sum fck b d square, understood d square. So, bending moment is dire directly proportional to d square. If bending moment increasing, depth will increase square times. I hope it is clear. m equal to sum all those constant into d square. Remember that. So, the depth is a very, very important factor, but consider a bending moment is very high, but in your building, you cannot provide such a heavy depth. Consider your uh, the building where you are sitting. Hopefully, everywhere it is doubly reinforced section. Wherever you are sitting and seeing this video, so in those beams, maximum it will be if you are in a residential or apartment or 300 to 400 mm average. Okay, that will be the depth of the beam. So always there will be a restriction for the beam depth because if you increase the depth little more high, it will come inside the uh, above the window or inter beam. Okay, it will disturb everything. So, you can uh, always there will be a restriction whenever the designer or architect is giving you some design, always there he, he will tell maximum you can have a depth only of this depth. Okay, or they will ask you first, you cannot tell them that 500 mm depth for a residential building. Okay, 500 mm is too high for a residential building. Always the average is I told you already. Okay, so always there will be a depth restriction will be there. So, to reduce the depth, to reduce the depth for a heavy bending moment, you have, have to go for extra reinforcement in the compression side also that will reduce the depth i will show you in examples okay so whenever there is a depth restriction you will go for a doubly reinforced section whenever there is a reversal of stresses that's very important so you know by simple bending theory when i am bending a beam top side is compression bottom side is tension okay so when there is a reversal of stress is happening you know a wave right uh, how a wave will pass how a earthquake wave will pass it will there if there is a wave there in the wave there will be always a crust and trough will be there correct so when there is a peak is going there will be a down so when the beam is going to vibrate because of any dynamic loads there will be a compression and tension okay understood so the same beam which is bending with compression at the top tension at the bottom can bend immediately whenever there is an earthquake earthquake is an oscillation so the when earth, earthquake pulls you and push you pulls you and push you when the wave passes so when this pull and push is happening, the same beam which is having bending like this, bending like compression at top and tension at the bottom can also bend like tension at the top and compression at the bottom. 
so there will be a reversal of stress is possible whenever there is a wind heavy wind load or heavy earthquake load such time consider you are having a singly reinforced section means you have only reinforcement at the bottom because of the tension you are expecting only at the bottom okay so when the reversal of stress is happening means that the beam is bending in hogging direction hogging i hope you know what is hogging so beam is bending in hogging suddenly there is no reinforcement at the top because it is singly reinforced the total beam will collapse okay it is a disaster so whenever there is a reversal of stresses it is expected everywhere nowhere i that's what i told you it's a theory singly reinforced section is a theory nowhere we will design a singly reinforced section everywhere we will design a doubly reinforced section so whenever there is a reversal of stresses happening you need reinforcement both at the top and also at the bottom okay so that we will use the doubly reinforced section and everything is clear i wish to show you some real time pictures at the bottom you can see the uh, photo below so they have a, at, i think four to five bars i think there are two layers of reinforcement at the top because i think so what you can see the uh, the beam which is coming towards outside so there are four bars i think 16 to 20 mm and uh, there are stirrups spaced that are uh, very less spacing i think it is less than 5 to 6 cm 50 mm to 100 mm spacing of stirrups near the column okay and uh, there are stirrups you can see the reinforcement right at the bottom and also at the top there are reinforcement this is called doubly reinforced uh, beam okay and there are column bars which is coming out you can see this figure will explain everything there this is a beam column joint okay the junction is a beam two sides of beam is joining and the column is coming out is a beam column joint that is a very critical location to have a proper concrete because compacting is very difficult there okay and this beam doesn't look like uh, compacting will not be that difficult it's quite a simple beam with a very few reinforcement i will show at the end sometime if you are interested i will show you some uh, port and harbor structures reinforcement details how they put the beam there will be very very heavy the 32 mm bars will be everywhere at the top 25 mm bars will be the second layer so consider they have to put a bars of 20 bars but the beam width is very less okay the beam width may be 1 meter or 0.5 meter and they have 12 bars to 16 bars to put then they will go to the second line okay so if there is a second line then the compacting will be very high, very difficult how they manage if you are interested somebody i may wish to show you something at the end for the application how to how they will do at the different locations this is a simple doubly reinforced section beam okay so far i hope you know why we are going for doubly reinforced section and what is doubly reinforced section what extra we are going to put what extra we are going to put forget the stirrups we are going to see that in next coming chapters design for shear now we are uh, from the top figure you can see right side top figure there are three bars at the bottom so far we know how to put the three bars that is the ast that's what we have discussed in the previous chapter now the new thing which is coming up is uh, two bars at the top okay so don't ever think that double reinforcement means not putting bars only at the top okay that's what confusing right i will show you in the next slide so this picture explains very clearly what is double reinforced section you see mu let's say there are three figures three rectangles you see the mu so mu is the consider the bending moment we want to design the beam consider somebody is giving you 300 kilo newton meter or 250 kilo newton meter this is a very big number 250 kilo newton meter they are asking you to design a beam okay so there are, you see for a left side figure left left side figure is the double reinforced section okay so you see there are 1 2 3 4 5 bars at the bottom two bars at the top so don't think that putting two bars at the top is called double reinforced section no it's you see the last figure right side third figure uh, last figure so putting two bars at the bottom two bars at the top this is called double reinforced section clear putting the same equal number of bars at the top and bottom is called double reinforced section never imagine that you are putting only the bars at the top is called double okay okay so i will explain in theory how it works you see the left side moment mu left left to most moment is mu okay for mu you have to design consider the moment given for mu is uh, 150 or 2 sorry 250 or 300 kN meter first what you will you do you will check the mu limit i hope you know what is mu limit for the given depth and width and for given fc and fy what is the maximum moment the beam can take if it is a singly reinforced section okay for a balanced section i hope it is clear we have solved so many problems so for a singly moment uh, uh, singly reinforced section what is the maximum moment it can take for a balanced section is mu limit so for an example i will tell 350 is the number given to your hand 
please design a beam for 350 kilo newton meter oh, 350 is very high let's put 250 250 please design a beam and give me for 250 kilo newton meter, uh, meter they are giving you in your hand first what i will do i will design a singly reinforced they have they will give you the width and depth everything you see they have they will give you all this width and depth so for the given width and depth fck and fy i will calculate okay what is the maximum moment for the given width and depth and fck and fy the beam can take so if you see maximum moment will come around 150 or 100 100 kilo newton meter okay maximum one for the given dimensions it can take 100 but the customer gave you 250 so it can take 100 by if it is designed for single reinforced section so what is the remaining moment you have uh, you what is the problem moment is 150 right so you don't know what to do with that 150 that is the third picture so the third picture will show you you will put extra reinforcement ast2 at the bottom and you will put extra reinforcement asc at the top so the new figure coming at the last is the mu minus mu limit that 250 minus 100 to 150 for this extra moment which is coming outside for this extra moment you will put design some reinforcement for top and the bottom okay this is called double reinforced section i hope i made you clear they will give you some moment step one you will check if it is a single reinforced section how much moment it can take you can see the second figure that balanced section figure so you can see AST1. This AST1 is nothing but how you calculated the previous way of designing a single reinforced section and you can see the stress diagram also. I hope it is very clear. They have a parabola at the straight line T1 and C1. This C1 and T1 is not the same C1 and T1 what you used for this rectangle and parabolic portion in the concrete. No, that's totally different. This is C1 is C1 and T1 in the stress diagram is for sing, assuming MU limit singly reinforced section. We are using this C1 and T1 okay so the stress diagram now you have a new theory c2 and t2 is coming what is this c2 and t2 c2 is the new compression force required to handle that extra 150 kilo newton meter t2 is the extra tensile force required to handle that 150 kilo newton meter and the distance between them is liver arm distance 2 l2 initially they have given l1 i hope if you know the singly reinforced section c1 you know 0.36 fck b into xu what is t1 0.87 fi ast now in this case ast1 we are they are taking and the distance between them is liver arm 1 what is liver arm distance d minus 0.42 into xu i hope it is very clear okay now the new thing because of extra moment which to be designed the new compression force coming is c2 new tensile force coming is uh, t2 and the distance between them is liver arm distance l2 what is this liver arm distance l2 the total distance is small d effective with that d minus d dash what is d dash is the effective cover for the compression steel clear so d minus d dash will be the l2 okay i hope i made you clear they will give you some moment 100 oh, sorry 250 for uh, you are checking if it is a single reinforced section how much moment it can take it is 100 okay so remaining 150 you will put some extra steel both at the top and bottom like both at compression and tension side that is called w reinforced section clear that's it the theory so i will show you how to design okay so how to design so they will give you i told you to design means what to determine ast and asc in this case asc is coming area of steel in compression side so you have to design two things ast and asc and they will give you the moment they will give you the width depth cover d dash fck fy okay so step one i told you first you check the how much moment it can take if it is a singly reinforced section okay so if mu limit i am calculating fck bd square that i think you should put some number based on fi value i hope you remember okay so you calculate the mu limit value so if the moment of resistance consider the customer is giving you only 50 kilo newton meter and your beam itself can take 150 understood the beam mu limit is 150 the customer is giving you only 50 then why should i design doubly reinforced you go for single reinforced section itself okay only put some extra rods for tying the stirrups okay so step one is checking whether you need to go for single reinforce or double reinforce section okay if the customer given moment is less than the mu limit okay use srs single reinforce section if customer given moment is greater than mu limit given then use drs okay step one consider so with the mu limit ast1 is the steel required for a balance section i told you already so you know this formula give me one second 
Uh, so coming back, this uh, AST one is the steel required for a balancer section. So you will use the formula required for singly reinforced section. What formulas you used for singly reinforced section? We will use the same thing. You can see MU limit is same 0.87 FI AST one D minus 0.42 XC max. You substitute that XC max value from the previous thing 0 0.48, 0 0.53 D everything. Then you will get the same formulas if you remember 0.138 FCK BD square same formula. Then using that you know MU limit. You know if you know MU limit. means that the moment they will give you right anyhow so if you know that mu limit you substitute everything fy everything then you will get the ast1 directly okay uh, we will solve with an example if you don't understand step 1 you make sure what is the mu limit uh, you will get that a point of the some fck bd square you have fck you know b you know d substitute all those values there will be some numbers will come you get the mu limit come to step 2 you substitute all the other values you will get the ast1 this is exactly what you did in previous example problems Okay, now the new thing is step three and step four. Only we will get added. So now what? Two things. So see, I have told you already. What you you have to require to calculate is AST one, AST two, and AST three things you have to calculate. You see, AST one, AST two, and AST you have to calculate. So you have, you know AST one is the similar procedure. AST two now it is AST two is nothing but area of steel required in the tension side. Tension side is nothing but uh, you know you should know the formula. Bending moment is force into distance. What is the bending moment here? It is the extra bending moment. So what is given by you from the customer for you? M U. What you can already you designed for A S T one M U limit. I already designed something. My beam can take up to M U limit. You know. So M U minus M U limit is the moment you should design. I hope it is clear. So what is the uh, formula for uh, calculating uh, tension side of steel? Force into distance is the moment T two into L two. What is T two? Is a force value. What is force? Stress into area. What is stress here? Point eight seven F I. What is area? A S T two. Okay. So A S T two. Give me a second. G. So point eight seven F I is the stress. A S T two is the area. Stress into area is over for T two. What is L two? L two is the lever arm distance between. T two and C two. You can go back to that figure and then you can see C two and T two is the distance. Uh, you know D minus D is the effective depth from the top of the compression fiber to the uh, center of the reinforcement bar. That is D minus D dash effective cover will give you the L two. So you know everything, right? M U minus M U limit. You know F I. You know D. You know D dash. You know then you will get A S T two. So you put A S T one plus A S T two. You will have the area of the steel yourself. Okay. So finally, what you have to find A S C. The extra steel required in the compression side. So what is AAC again? Yeah, how to determine AAC is nothing but what is the extra moment you are designing for the steel? M U minus M U limit. What is moment? Force into distance. C two into L two. What is force? Stress into area. C two. Okay. So F C into AAC uh, is the force value. So F C into AAC is the sorry stress into area is the compression force. L two is the lever arm distance again. It is D minus D dash. So you. Unless they have given you, you should always take stress in compression steel. Also, is 0.87 FI. Okay, so they you know 0.87 FI into AAC. You know that value. You know M U minus M U limit. You know D and D dash. So bring everything left side. You will know the AAC. Okay, so now you know AAC one, AAC two, and AAC. This is the number of bars required to handle that extra moment. So overall, you can able to handle that M U value. That's it. The design. Okay. so we will see one example uh, uh, to understand this theory with this this session is over next session i will introduce analysis how to do an analysis of drs okay then we will solve some four five problems in the next session okay thank you